Okay, since you all have confirmed that you can hear me, I think I can proceed. Let me um, share my screen. So if I lose my connection or you stop hearing me, just um, try and let me know. So um, I would go forward to share my screen now. Excuse me, please. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, I I guess everyone can see my screen now. So basically, the internship training is for energy enthusiasts and students who uh, who want to know more about the energy sector. Basically, so we've uh, we have a, a couple of topics a couple of sessions lined up for the next four weeks from the introduction to the deep, uh, to in-depth analysis of petroleum fiscals and accounting and guide to um, natural gas, because you know natural gas is becoming a very uh, lucrative niche or important niche right now. So, um, and then we move to ESG, implementing ESG. All this, I believe are needed for your career in the energy sector and you won't regret attending this program in particular so uh, what do we have here so to begin with of course the introduction overview of the energy nigerian energy industry so there are basically three things that exist in the system we have the elements we have the uh, interconnection of the elements and purpose of the system. In any system whatsoever, you would have the element of that system. So that is what this first week would dwell on. It would dwell on introducing it to the elements or the components of the Nigerian energy industry. It will be a very um, devastating step for us to just go into um, energy operations and fiscals or natural gas without introducing to you the fundamentals, the fundamentals. So the fundamentals, yeah, will be uh, introducing to you the two arms of the Nigerian energy industry, which can be broadly classified, which is broadly classified into the petroleum industry and the electricity supply industry. Then um, we introduced to you the core areas of the petroleum industry and the participants in the petroleum industry. Then we introduced to you the core areas and participants in the electricity um, supply industry. So from this first slide, you've gotten the fact that the Nigerian energy industry, it's, it is broadly classified into the oil and gas sector, also known as the petroleum sector and the electricity supply um, industry. So you, you may have a um, renewable energy, hydropower, and all under electricity supply. And the reason why they are broadly classified like this is mainly because they are intertwined in a way. The natural gas that is gotten from the petroleum industry is what is fed into the generation sector of the electricity supply industry. So basically, you can't go on without doing the other. You can't have studied the energy sector without studying both the oil and gas industry 
and the petroleum industry. So moving straight to the um, oil and gas industry now. But before we go into that, uh, of course, you, you might have some opinions on um, petroleum value chain, the petroleum industry already. So at the end of this um, lesson now, I will expect you to be able to answer this question. The first question says, what segment of the petroleum value chain does um, refining and crude oil exports fall under? So at the end of this section, you must be able to um, answer that. Then the other question relates to, under what scope do we classify renewable energy in the electricity supply sector? Under what scope do we classify renewable energy? And explain how electricity gets to your house. So at the end of this um, session, you should be able to answer these questions, basically. So we would give you the floor. And then you must note that this presentation, the slides I'm showing, they are, they are, they are not self-explanatory. So even though you might get the slides after the uh, session, you must make sure you uh, listen to what I say because I, I, I would be speaking to the slides. So you may not get everything I say on the slide, basically. Yes. So we have the core um, sectors of the oil and gas industry. The petroleum industry value chain consists of the upstream, midstream, and downstream. That is the broad classification of the oil and gas industry. So what is the upstream sector now? It is the um, exploration and production stage. And activities under the upstream include um, exploration, production of oil, calculation of this and disposal to, calculation of royalties and disposal to midstream. So that is the upstream sector of the oil and gas industry. And the kind of companies you see in the upstream sector are examples are Shell, Chevron, Mobil, um, Total, they are upstream segments, basically. They dominate this area. So when you um, hear of IOCs or multinationals, those are what, those are the companies that are, that are called multinationals or IOCs. They involve mainly in um, exploration and production, which is the upstream sector. And you must have heard in the news recently how Shell, um, how Shell sold off their onshore assets to a Nigerian um, company or a Nigerian consortium because the company they sold it to is made up of different um, companies, different, um, about three companies like that, it's like a partnership between three companies. So that is basically um, upstream. And then activities in the upstream sector are carried out under various arrangements. What do you mean by arrangement? This kind of arrangements are called the joint ventures or um, joint operating agreements or production sharing contracts with NNPC Limited. So I, I won't go deep into um, the formula and the various joint ventures we have now, but just, just have it at the back of your mind that the upstream sector consists um, encompasses exploration and production activities. That is exploration of crude oil and production of crude oil. So that's that and that. Then um, the midstream sector involves hydrocarbon processing and transportation activities. That is petroleum processing and transportation. The it um, encompasses the establishment and construction of re refineries. You understand? Some people make the mistake of classifying Dangote refinery as a downstream um, downstream facility. Meanwhile, in actual in its actual sense, it is a midstream facility that is it's it's the operations in Dangote refinery are classified under midstream. So now that you are aware of this, you'll be able to assess you know, various oil and gas or petroleum issues that arise on a daily basis in the news, meaning you would have a more informed opinion on issues surrounding the sector. So um, 
I, I was saying that the um, mainstream sector encompasses processing, transportation, refineries, and you know, trucking and crude oil terminal operations. So, and the Dangote refinery is a mainstream facility. So the downstream facility now, or the downstream sector rather of the oil and gas industry captures you know, the distribution of petroleum products, depot operations, pricing, retailing and marketing. So the filling station you have beside your house or um, by roadside is a downstream operation. It's a downstream operation. This is the downstream operation. So it's very important to note these three sectors or these three core areas in the petroleum industry value chain. Now, at the end of this um, lesson, as you might have read in the um, schedule of activities, you are meant to um, give an illustration presenting the petroleum value chain. So all these I'm saying are what would basically inform your illustration. So as I explained, I would have even explained how the value chain works already. Value chain means how um, how activities in a sector are conducted from one point to the other to the final consumer. So from the upstream to the midstream to the downstream, you should have an idea of the value chain already. So just um, take notes of everything right now. And then the NMDPRA regulates both midstream and downstream. Yes, I forgot to mention the other time, the upstream sector is regulated by the NUPRC. In the next session, we would focus more on what they do, on what these regulatory bodies do. But just put at the back of your mind right now that the upstream sector is regulated by the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, while the midstream and downstream sector is regulated by the uh, Nigerian midstream and downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. And one thing that most people don't know is that the Petroleum Industry Act itself has even um, elaborated on the kind of activities that exist under each sector, that is each under upstream, under midstream, and under downstream. And the Petroleum Industry Act further elaborates it. Instead of having um, three classifications now, the Petroleum Industry Act has elaborated it into like five operations, but the all four under each of these um, three operations, basically. So if you check the Pet Petroleum Industry Act under, I think, section 318, that's where you have the definitions. The Petroleum Industry Act will define um, upstream petroleum operations. It will define midstream and downstream petroleum operations, and it will tell you what consists or what the activities that are in each sector and how the transfer cost study of crude oil, how crude oil is taken from the upstream to the midstream, and how the processed crude oil from the midstream is taken to the downstream, and how that um, and how petroleum products from the downstream is taken to um, the final consumers. So that is that on that. Then um, participants in the oil and gas industry, we've having examined the um, core areas. It is important we look at the participants in the oil and gas. Of course, the federal government of Nigeria is a prime participant in the sense that the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria itself vests in the federal government the ownership of petroleum within Nigeria and these territories. You understand? So everything um, petroleum is vested in the federal government of Nigeria. And then the Minister of Petroleum Resources is also a, a player in the sense that uh, it is responsible for policy formulation and supervising implementation in uh, the oil and gas industry. The current Minister of Petroleum Resources, as we all know, is um, Bola Ahmed, the president himself, that is President Tinobu himself. Same with um, Buhari's regime, where Buhari was the Minister of Petroleum Resources. Meanwhile, um, that, that act itself contradicts the PI because the president is not supposed to be the uh, Minister of Petroleum Resources. It's um, the 
petroleum industry doesn't contemplate the president being the uh, Minister of Petroleum Resources because the Minister of Petroleum Resources would have to report to someone and you know for supervisory purposes. So that's it will however, that's another topic for another day. I digress. So what you should just know now is that um, the Minister of Petroleum Resources is one of the primary players. Then the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission regulates upstream um, petroleum operations, like we said earlier, and implement policies also. So upstream activities, as we have said earlier, includes um, exploration for petroleum, um, petroleum development and production, you know, seismic activities and all. So the commission also grants petroleum exporting, um, exploration licenses and um, petroleum prospecting licenses and petroleum mining leases. So that is the work of the um, Nigerian Upstream Regulatory Commission. Then we have the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. It's supposed to be petroleum. So, as their name is Revenue Stream and Downstream, and then we have explained earlier. So, let's not uh, do the NNPC. Before the PIA, the NNPC was a federal operation. But after the PIA and after transfer of assets from the NNPC, it becomes um, the NNPC, that is the Nigerian. National, um, Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. So it's a limited liability company, of course, and it performs commercial operations now rather than um, operating as a public utility like it's um, that it was before now. So that is the NNPC for you. And uh, yes, the Nigerian Gas Processing and Transportation Company is a primary participant also. We will go in this internship, we we'll delve deeply into um, gas, natural gas, natural gas, because we believe it will be very valuable for everyone. Yeah, for everyone. Yeah. In fact, one of our facilitators is a um, legal advisor in a top gas company in Nigeria. So he would provide more insight for you on natural gas development and project financing. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this. Uh, but you know that we are, we are just not we are not just regurgitating things that you already know or things that you can easily find in. I'm telling you, okay, things that might not be obvious to you yet, but will be valuable to you later on, and you can use as leverage in your various careers. So it is very important. Yes, um, I guess I've digressed again. The Nigerian gas marketing company is a subsidiary of the NNPC Limited. Okay, let's, let me start from Nigerian Gas Processing and Transportation Company to uh, participants or two companies are, um, let me see if I can get annotations. Yeah. Okay, these two companies are just are subsidiaries of the NNPC Limited. So one is involved, the Nigerian Gas Processing and Transportation Company that is up here, is the one involved in uh, the uh, transportation, um, transportation of gas. That is, the company itself owns the main natural gas pipelines infrastructure. You know, in Nigeria, what we use to transport gas is primarily through pipeline, the AKK pipeline, Ajakuta, Kaduna, Kano gas pipeline, and transportation. The main gas pipeline transportation facilities or infrastructure that we have. Then we have the Eastern Network pipeline, the Escrabos pipeline also. So, the company also grants you know, franchises to private parties, that is private um, transportation companies to develop gas distribution infrastructure. The subsidiary of the NPC. So it's what 
and sell it to opticals. So really acts as you know as a market of natural gas to major of in users. So that is um their job. And then um the gas aggregation company of Nigeria. This is another important participant you have to uh, really note. What they do is that they aggregate, uh, they act as intermediary between upstream producers and wholesale gas of takers. This, all this might not make sense to you now. All this might not make sense to you now. But just note, we have the NMDPR, we have a transportation company that owns the major um, transportation infrastructure. And we have the Nigerian Gas Marketing Company that acts as intermediary between um, of gas and off the gas. And then we have the Gas Aggregation Company. So the, the Gas Aggregation Company of Nigeria acts as between opticals. It's it's a strategic, they are, they are strategic aggregators, meaning they process um, gas by request, they manage, they facilitate gas sales transactions within the natural gas sector, basically. So that is what they do. However, we used to have one aggregator before, but with the introduction of the PIA, or the enactment of the PIA rather, um, we, can have, we can have different aggregators in the natural gas sector. So they won't hold that. Uh, there will be competition for them, basically. Then we have the Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Limited. So this company was incorporated to, to harness Nigeria's uh, natural gas resources and you know, produce liquefied natural gas in Nigeria, as the name implies. So then we have shippers to their, they are the ones that they are licensed entities that book capacity at entry point, exit point on gas pipeline. When you have a gas pipeline, you would have exit points, you would have um, entry points. So the shippers are the ones that book capacity, you know, operators that want to um, get gas from the pipeline. So basically, they, uh, they are at the entry and exit points of the gas pipelines. Then um, the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board this is, very, this is an important partic participant in the sense that um, they make procedures that will guide and implement the provisions of the Local Content Act. So you might ask, what does local content mean? It means um, deliberate the utilization of Nigerian human resources and services in the Nigeria oil and gas sector. That is the use of Nigerians rather than um, expatriates or uh, in the Nigerian oil and gas sector. So there are different instruments to use um, Nigerians in their operations, that is in their labor, in their material resources, in, in um, employment services, Nigerians must be prioritized. provides that Nigerian operators like consideration in the award of oil blocks and oil feed lines. It requires operators and companies to employ only Nigerians in their junior um, and intermediate uh, levels in the company. So basically what the Nigerian content and development and monitoring board is to ensure that the companies in the oil and gas sector comply with the um, local content acts, the, the local content. Spanty is the Federal Minister of Environment. I'm sure you must have heard of um, environmental impact assessment. So the Federal Minister of Environment are the ones that uh, that uh, supervise compliance with environmental impacts and assessment of projects in the energy sector, basically. Then um, it also monitors waste management. That's very important too, aside from environmental impact assessment. 
Then we have the Federal Ministry of Trade, um, of Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investments, Trade and Investments, and you know issue export grants permit certificates. You know when uh, crude oil is being exported and everything, they are involved in these aspects of the other. We give them a special mention. So we have the key ones you should actually know. Federal government, the Minister of Petroleum Resources, NUPRC, NMDTL, NGPT, Nigeria Gas Marketing Company, the Gas Pass, NLNG, then the Federal Minister of Environment. Um, yes, so now we are in the that that's for the uh so the couriers and participants for the period. for the electricity supply industry you know the electricity supply industry basically is the industry that supplies electricity to your houses and everything so most of us only know when light reaches our house we don't know how the light is generated you don't even know how or why you don't have 24 7 power supply so this would help you have an informed opinion of why, okay, there's we, we don't have 24 seven power supply in Nigeria, or why um why people still shout oh understand, even though NEPA doesn't exist anymore. So basically would we'll reveal all these things to you. So you have to understand the core areas in the electricity so electricity supply industry first. And the first area is the generation uh, sector, generation area. So it it's, um, connotes generation of electrical energy from various sources, understand? It is where the production of electrical energy occurs. So electricity can be generated from various energy sources, but the primary sources of generation of electricity in Nigeria is natural gas and um, natural gas mix. Uh, dominant um, generation. Um, so then we have renewable energy like solar, wind, biomass, and geothermal. So hydropower is also an example of renewable energy. And we have solar energy also that is um, becoming common. And uh, we don't have geothermal. Uh, then wind, we don't have wind. So we've been well in particular with obviously we have we are blessed with sunlight here. And so um, almost every house is have generation segments basically. Generation segments of um, natural gas, renewable energy. Those are the primary sources of generation of electricity. And then we have uh, transmission segments. It involves transmission now, involves movement of generated power at a high voltage over long distances to the distribution companies for distribution to end users. Now, don't mix up transmission with distribution. When electricity, electricity is generated, the electricity generated can't be linked directly to your house or else uh, you would have high voltage or things will get spoiled in your house. So it's important to manage uh, the transmission of electricity from the generation segment to the distribution sector. So the transmission sector steps it down, steps down electricity to a voltage that would that's, and for distribution companies to distribute. So the transmission of power is managed by um, the transmission company of Nigeria. Basically, the transmission company of Nigeria and um, it is operated, the transmission company of Nigeria, although the transmission company of Nigeria is owned by the federal government of Nigeria, their operations are through the private sector, it's managed by the private sector. So that is transmission and uh, distribution segments, yeah, entails distribution of generated and um, transmission of power through distribution networks. You know, you have different distribution networks, about 11 of them, yeah, 11. We have 11 distribution companies rather in Nigeria um, covering different areas. 
I think we have, we have Abuja Electricity Distribution Companies. Abuja Electricity Distribution Companies covers um, the Lokoja and some other areas in the north. And I know Ibadan Electricity Distribution Company covers uh, Osho states and Oyo states. And I think, um, I think only Osho states and Oyo states. Then Benin Electricity Distribution Company covers obviously been uh, uh, on those states and um, at those states. So distribution companies distribute um, power that is transmitted from the transmission company to end users. So the high voltage electricity that is used for transmission is converted into lower voltages by you know, substation transformers and then delivered to customers via various wires and poles. Yeah, so, and it is important to know that government holds 40% equity in distribution companies, at least. The government holds 40% um, equity in distribution companies. So the remainder of 60% is held by private operators, private operators. So if you have a bad on the electricity distribution company, for instance, the government owns 40% equity in that company. No. So the key participants, uh, okay. Um, other core areas in the electricity supply industry, we have system operations, independent system operations. Uh, they, they form part of transmission, but I think the um, petroleum, sorry, the Electricity Act of 2023 now um, separates transmission from system operations. So that's why I have listed it under uh, orders. So uh, trading also, we would get to uh, understand what trading implies there. We have the NBET. The NBT, the NBT involves in trading of electricity. Then uh, we have renewable energy also. The renewable energy sector is the core area in the electricity supply industry. And the Electricity Act majorly on renewable energy to plants in the electricity. Um, Supply industry. I'm sure I'm, I must have mentioned some of them in the earlier slide. We have the generation company, that is the power producer. So these companies generate electricity through either um, natural gas or hydropower. I'm sure you, you must the, the Gerego power that is owned by Femi or Tedula. So that is the generation company, electricity generation company, because natural gas, it produces natural gas that is used for um, electricity. Yeah. down to now, the companies managing these facilities are called generation companies because they are power producers. Then we have uh, off the cars too. Off the car is the, it's basically the, uh, the body that purchases power produced, power produced from uh, the gen so um, the major of the car right now that we have right now in Nigeria is the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC. So the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC purchases power produced from generation companies, and then it it administers the electricity pool, meaning. It buys power from the generation companies and um, through power purchase agreements, of course, and then sells the power to distribution companies through an investing contract. So the NBT buys power from generation companies through power purchase agreements and sells the power to the schools through investing contracts. So it basically bridges the gap between um, generation companies and distribution companies. I hope you understand. So uh, the power purchase agreement between generation companies and the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC is uh, states the commercial arrangement of each party. The commercial arrangement of each party. So uh, I think um, the this this party now, the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC, will soon be phased out. Like they will soon be displaced because. Um, the the regulators that is the Nigerian electricity regulatory company is looking forward to have 
distribution companies uh, contract directly with general companies to buy but as at this moment, Nigerian block electricity power from the um generating companies. So the United Electric Commission, of course, this is the primary regulatory supply. They issue licenses, conduct business of electricity generation, distribution. So when it comes to license industry, the city regulatory commission does that. Of course, we can't go without mentioning the because of course gas, we said earlier that gas is the main source of generation of electricity. So since the gas aggregation company of Nigeria is the companies act as intermediary between um, gas uh, producers and gas uh, consumers. So they are here to administer the use of this just is responsible for um, ensuring compliance in this sector. You know, they also enforce safety through various electrical power plants, transmission system, distribution network. So all they do is technical um, electricity. They make sure that okay, um, power plants or your transformer uh, is working. And electricity installations are working perfect, perfectly too. Then the transmission earlier their function do. So they own and manage the national grid and they provide transmission services. Distribution companies earlier. But I think I have to um, elaborate for for the, your knowledge. Let me elaborate on um uh, the distribution companies that we have. So the government, you know, there was a privatization process sometime in 2013, between 2013 and 2014, where the distribution segment was privatized. And we have 11 distribution companies now. So uh, we have the Abuja distribution company, of course. It covers the FCT, um, Kogi State, Nasarawa State, and Niger State. That's Abuja. Then the Bini distribution company covers um, at those states, uh, uh, Delta states, yeah, Ekiti states, and on those states. Then the Enugu distribution company covers, of course, Enugu, Ebony, Abia, and Anambra states. Um, the Eco distribution company covers states, while the Ikeja distribution company covers the mainland area of Lagos state. Then, as I'm stating this, you should know from this distribution company that is a Okay, don't let me waste time on this though. Um, just note that because some um, it company doesn't mean they are solely meant for Abuja. They can their their distribution coverage area or distribution network can extend to other states too. So it is not um, strict to sense to only Abuja. So um, companies we have independent. Electricity distribution companies. No. Distribution companies I have mentioned earlier. I hope um, you can still hear me. So, yes, so the um, Electricity, electricity distribution companies are responsible for um, providing electricity uh, to, to areas that are not connected to the grid or that are not connected to distribution network. So the distribution network covered the main distribution companies. So they mainly operate in unserved 
and underserved areas. City distribution companies. Then we have the meter access um, asset providers, rather. Now, what they do is that they take responsibility for the financing and installation of meters. So that's their job, basically. And of course, we have the end users. The end users, I think, are classified into three. We have the industrial users, the commercial users, and the um, residential users of electricity. So those are the basic, those are basically the participants, the main participants. Yeah. So um, the now having uh, explained the areas of each electricity um, of each sector and their participants, it's expected that you uh, uh, you draw up um, the power although I. I provided it earlier, but I thought since um, I've talked about it already, you should come up with um, one that resonates um, from what you've listened to so far. You can come up with a value chain for the power, um, power sector. And of course, for the oil and gas sector too. So um, yes, that would be the, um, conclusion of this um, lecture. So I would be taking questions now. I'll be taking questions. I am sure that you have questions to ask. So please, and if you have observations or you want me to um, clarify something I mentioned earlier, I, I noticed that I was a bit fast, maybe, maybe because I thought we are far, we are far behind schedule. However, um, forgive me for that. But if you need me to go over um, something again, just let me know, please. So questions, you can unmute questions. Thank you. Um, shuk uh, shukra Ide. So does anyone have any question? If you have a question, just okay in the chat box. Could you explain this question? Says, could you explain midstream and downstream again? Yes. Okay. I I want you to paint a mental picture now. A mental picture, like if you are producing anything in particular. Uh, producing anything, you would have your raw materials, you would have your processing facility, and you would have your distribution segment. So that mental image you have created is applicable. First, upstream operations deal with sourcing of raw material for petroleum products. And the raw material for petroleum products here is crude oil and natural gas crude oil and natural gas. So activities in the upstream revolve around petroleum exploration, development and production. So NUPR, so that is Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission. And then the midstream is the stage where you process the crude oil that you've, um, that you've sourced earlier. So when this thing is um, processed, it is processed either through refineries or gas processing plants. That is, crude oil is processed in refineries and the and gas, natural gas is processing facilities. So these are midstream um, operations. And then the transportation of crude oil and natural gas from the upstream to the midstream is under midstream activities too. That is what happened under midstream. Then the downstream sector captures the distribution of the processed 
petroleum. The processed petroleum are turned into petroleum products, such as the um, fuel you buy inside your car. So products and then fertilizers too. Products. And you know, the tilling and looks is basically done in the downstream sector. So it is very important to note the next session deals with uh, deals with the various licenses that obtain or people for each um sector that is upstream sector, midstream sector, and downstream sector. You will be able to understand better uh, the activities in the sectors. So basically, just get it that upstream consists of exploration, petroleum exploration and production. Midstream consists of petroleum um, crude oil and natural gas transportation and um, refining, refinery activities and gas processing activities. Then um, distribution sector involves the distribution of electricity, the issue is under the, um, the downstream sector. So let's, I hope um, that is explained better. So um, the next question here says, how is gas used in generating electricity? Gas is used in generating electric, like, not just any gas, natural gas, basically. Through gas processing facilities, you can generate ele electricity through gas. Even though some countries use coal or um, thermal, So natural gas is used in generating electricity through gas processing facilities. So when gas is produced, the generated gas is you know, converted into electricity that, is, that can be bought by generating companies, you understand, to source electricity from. And then uh, could you please dip differentiate between the roles of the transmission company of Nigeria and the Nigerian book um, electricity trading company. So the transmission company of Nigeria is, is the, is the um, company that provides transmission um, services to the distribution sector. To understand the role of the transmission company of Nigeria, you'd have to understand what's transmission means in the first instance. And I explained earlier that transmission involves the movement of power generated from the generating companies at the higher voltage, at the high voltage rather, over long distances to the distribution companies. For instance, we have um, about, I think, 12 distribution, 12 major distribution um, gen generation companies in Nigeria in various areas. We understand that those 12 those generation companies can't be in every area of Nigeria. So what they do is that they send their generator, generating power, their generated power rather, to the uh, to the transmission sector, transmission companies rather. So we have transmission companies in different states, in different states. So what these transmission companies do is that they They receive the transmitted power from the um, generation generating companies, and then they also manage the national grid. So they are the one that manages the uh, national grid. Basically, that's what they do. But the NBET now, the NBT, what the NBT does is to um, buy power from generating companies through power purchase agreements. They don't necessarily transmit the power. They don't necessarily trans transmit the power. The transmission company of Nigeria transmits the power, but the contracts that um, the contracts for purchase of power and sale of power to the distribution companies is undertaken by the NBET, the Nigerian Public Electricity Trading Company Limited. I understand. 
So the test done by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, why the GENCOs themselves are the ones that are involved, and why the um, NBT are the ones that are involved in the contractual framework that is um, setting up our purchase agreements with the GENCOs and then setting up vesting contracts with the discos. I hope um, that is understood. Um, another question here. Yeah? Is there any regulation gov governing the renewable energy industry? Of course, the Electricity Act of 19, oh, sorry, not 19, um, of 2023 specifically provides for uh, renewable energy generation and it's, it is elaborate enough as a governing instrument for renewable energy. And then we also have the mini grid, um, 2023 mini grid regulation. You don't have to, like already you know, mini grid involves you no know, generation for generation of electricity for um, underserved or unserved areas. So, and that that can be done either through um, through fossil fuel sources or through renewable energy sources like solar energy. So those uh, that covers renewable energy also. So the electricity electricity act covers um, renewable energy and the mini grid regulations too cover renewable energy. Uh, explain the duties of shippers again. So shippers are basically, uh, they are the parties that, you know, they are involved in gas transportation, in the gas transportation value chain. They are, I'm sorry, yes, gas transportation. I mean. They are involved in gas transportation through gas pipelines. So before you use a gas pipeline, you would have entry and exit points. So the shippers are the ones that book capacity for each operator that wants to use the entry and exit points on the gas pipeline. So a shipper is required to pay for instance, a transportation charge that would, that would enable uh, them to book capacity at entry and exit points on the gas pipeline. And then they, basically they are involved in the gas pipeline, um, in, in the usage of gas pipeline by, by different companies. Although, uh, but this is just like a summary of what they do. What they do would make sense in reality, explain to you, but just know that in, a gas pipeline, we have entry and exit points, and the shippers are the ones that you know book um, book capacity for operators at the entry and exit points. So um, yes, of course, in subsequent sessions, we'll explain more about their functions. The the role of off-taker, the role of off-taker in the energy industry is performed by the um, NBT because they are, they are the ones that buy from generation companies. So that is what they do basically. They buy power from the generation companies and then they sell to the distribution companies or to consumers. Can you, another question here. Can you restate the role of the Nigerian gas processing and uh, transportation companies, the Nigerian gas? marketing call. Let me just, I know it can be a bit confusing, but let me explain it in a very simplified way. Now we have, uh, we have gas, we have the gas sector, the natural gas sector. The gas sector is, is managed or, or used to be managed. Natural gas sector. Then NPC. Then we have the natural, the Nigerian gas called the gas transmission network. You've processed gas to transmit various off takers or various users. You will need um, companies that are companies that own. This is where the gas Nigerian gas marketing company comes in and the Nigerian gas processing and transportation. So the Nigerian gas market, 
now is a subsidiary of the NNP that they buy gas from upstream producers and so they purchase not for sale to end consumers and they also construct and maintain instance they are the ones that as client transportation infrastructure three um three main um gas pipeline eastern network we have the um escravos um pipeline kk pipeline also that is the agile pipeline so the nigerian gas processor owns this main natural transportation is to private parties you understand they don't purchase natural gas like uh, like the nigerian gas marketing company so that is the difference between them the natural nigerian gas marketing company on the other hand they are involved in the purchase of natural gas in bulk for sale to end consumers so uh why is there still an electricity Electricity supply deficient natural gas, which are major source of electricity. Well, simply because gas is more economic for gas uh, for upstream companies. They and to utilize the gas because. To maintain or operate processing facility is usually costly, especially and then the the electricity supply deficiency is not only related to um, with flaring natural gas; it is related to um the consumers first because we have so many consumers that are not metered, built through the use of estimated billing. So it is not really um, efficient for using um, various distribution companies owing um, debts and um, to various banks and because they collect, they, they buy power from the, uh, the NBT on loan, basically. And then if they don't, if they are not able to pay back in due time, the power that they in a period in a particular period will reduce obviously so when people are, are not me understand when people are getting lights um electric electricity rather illegally from poles and all that affects the returns in or um in the investment of these distribution companies and generation companies and you know, transmission companies so that is why if we have a system that is able to you know recover the cost. And you, you should note that electricity is currently being subsidized, meaning the bill you see on your um on your electricity, the amount you see on, on your electricity bill doesn't fully reflect the costs of that electricity supplied into um, your house. So it is still being subsidized currently. So improvements, I don't support the more subsidizing the system can be more efficient through metering, through metering, understand? So metering is very essential. And then of course there is corruption also. So we can't rule out the possibility of corruption in this instance. So that's basically why we are still uh, supply and why we're still deficient in electricity compared to other African countries. That's all the questions we are having right now. Uh, so if you have further questions, please um, let me know in the group chats. And, um, I will send the task to the uh, group chat again for everyone to see. So before next session, it will be submitted. So thank you everyone for, um, for attending and have a nice weekend ahead of you. We can leave the meeting now.